All right, charge! You'd never send your cavalry in first, like on stupid Game of Thrones when they lost their source material. If I can't grab with this weapon, two thirds of its effectiveness is gone. And so when you see that long pole arm, I wouldn't want to use one of those in combat. Get out of there! No, leave him alone! No! Welcome back, my lords and ladies, to another amazing episode of Experts React! I am your right a former Green Beret, and with me, my special guest, Paul Nykesnap! <laughs> We're going to be looking at some game footage today from Chivalry 2. Very requested, very excited for this. Let's get to it. Okay, this is more my style. I love, this is like classic medieval battle going on right here. You got faction versus faction. You got the Agatha Knight, the Mason Order going at each other. It's just hack and slash. It's so much fun. Okay, so because they're trying to be realistic, I feel like I have liberty to criticize a little bit more, or be a little more you know, critical than say a sci-fi fantasy type thing. So some of the moves they're using here is realistic. Others, not so much. All you're doing when you're swinging a, a giant sword like that, well, it's not a giant sword. First off, let's talk about the sword. This is one of my favorite swords. There's this oak shot system of like labeling classic or classifying swords. It doesn't always go on a timeline. It kind of does, but it, it's more like blade, hilt type and everything. And so not only is this a specific type of sword, but it's a subtype. So this is an oak shot 18 subtype E. So it's got a diamond profile blade. It makes it a lot stronger and more depth. This thing is for thrusting, for stabbing. Uh. You can swing it around, but it's more for deflecting and finding those, the, 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 is it the kink or the chink? I don't know, I'm probably gonna get kicked off of YouTube. Uh, of the, I think chink in the armor, yeah. You're supposed to literally find the chink in the armor, you know, the soft spots. Or underneath all your plate and everything, you have chain mail. And just swinging a blade like that, unless you're like, you know, some sci-fi fantasy hero, unlikely you're gonna penetrate the chain mail. So you gotta stab through it. I just wanna see a, uh, yeah, I got swords everywhere. So I just wanna see this part right here. So you see that right there. That's what makes it the subtype E. And to me, I just think it looks cool. Kind of comes in close to the hilt. The kind of metal kind of comes in. Yep. And it, and it comes out actually wider than the blade and then it comes back in. And I just, I don't know. To me, that's one of the sexiest long swords ever. That looks very fantasy inspired actually. Yeah, but no, but that's real. So this is like, uh, there's an actual Danish sword. It's beautiful. It looks very similar to that, the same guard and everything. But like, I love this blade profile. This is a great two-handed sword. I think this, this came in uh, hand and a half as well. So this sword became, uh, into its own in the mid 15th and 16th century. That's where you would find this sword in like, in real life. Oh, he kind of grabbed it a little bit. Looks like he was about to grab the blade and closer to the hilt and do some kind of move with it. That's a little, it seems like a little more Hema inspired, you know, using the blade, using different parts of the blade, not just kind of swinging it willy nilly, you know. Hema is like, it, it's historical European martial arts. And so they're trying to recreate what they did back then. So they literally did do that. And that's one of the things you could use with this sword. You're wearing gauntlets with chain mail. Grab the front of the blade and then swing it around. So like, if you want to bash someone good and not damage your blade, you hit him with the guard. This does a good job of making it look really messy and really chaotic. And you're not, it's not gonna look like the kind of beautiful fencing style that we see in a lot of action movies. It's gonna be messy. Because he's using it like a long sword, he doesn't need a shield, but then the way you'd be using it is you'd be deflecting those blades out of the way. You don't want to take your blade and just smash it against another blade and risk bending it, risk, you know, breaking it, right? So this is, you know, 15th, 16th century, you know, heat treating and tempering was a lot better than the Iron Age. A lot of swords for many years were made out of pattern welded steel. By now they had much better metal, but you still didn't want to just run up and bash your blade against somebody else so you would use their energy and momentum to deflect because you're constantly trying to poke that dude or grab the blade and then swing it around and smash him with the guard and get him on the ground oh there we go there's a halberd so do you see that that pole arm that that guy's using Long right there pole. yeah those are super effective if you look at it there's a spike on the top and there's a blade, but the blade on halberds were actually bigger than the blade on pole axes. They did do a slashing, but the blade was usually kind of angled. You would use it for hooking, and then you'd use the hammer to smash, or you'd use the spikes to penetrate. Get right in the, in the old ear hole, or wherever you can get to penetrate and jump in there. Okay, do you see that pole arm kind of thing they're using, that, that one axe? My issue with that, 
So those existed then, but they were usually only used as weapons by farmers. That's a farm implementation. You know, this is a bearded axe. This is like a Viking style axe. But if you notice, it doesn't come down and touch the blade. You can do a little bit of, let me grab the camera. <laughs> you can do a little bit of stabbing with it too, right? But you know what this is also great for? Hooking, grabbing someone's shield and ripping it out of their hands and then poking them in the eye with your little, your little, your little point right here. If I can't grab with this weapon, this weapon is now like two thirds of its effectiveness is gone. And so when you see that long pole arm, where that, it has that huge blade coming down, I wouldn't want to use one of those in combat. I would want to use something mm. that I can hook and push with. Got the war cry, the, the, the battle horns. There's a horn of Gundor. Oh, there's a mace. You see that mace? Yeah, long one. Long those hand. are super, yep. Yep, so they made them in various lengths and uh, you definitely had to have strength and there was a technique to use it. So you see a guy with the sword on his back right there. You'd often carry great swords on your back, but you wouldn't draw it out to fight with. That's just where you would carry it because it would just drag on the ground if it was on your belt. Boom. So we're a little less armor. He's got a sword and shield now. So that's an arming sword. It looks like an arming sword to me. Oh, okay, so we got some maces. Those were easy to make and they were pretty solid. And they weren't the same as, as those ball maces. Those those could crush armor and like start to penetrate. You got a halberd there. I think this is a type 16. All right, you see him fighting with that pole axe. That's a halberd. All right, so lots of hooking and stabbing. The mace there. There's a dude with a mace. There you go. So with maces, you want to keep your momentum going, right? I mean, you could, you can push away and everything, but there's a lot of mass there that you're using a lot of energy to push forward and push back. So generally, mm. you want to use that energy to. There's that stupid pole axe. Oh, shields! Uh, shields get a little uh, punished there. Well, and shields would break. You know, you chip away at them. You, you know, they'd eventually break, and you get new ones. Get out of there! No, leave him alone! No! Oh! Good hit. Ooh, good counter. Oh, a bunch of double-bladed axes. So that looks like a, a Gimli axe. Did you see the Gimli axe there? Yeah! The double-bladed uh, axe. Yeah. What a brilliant set of films. I don't believe all these double-bitted axes. It just doesn't make sense to see that many. I'm sure a couple existed, but they're like, well, I'd rather have a spike or a hammer on one end. It adds extra weight, and you're, you're taking away options and adding weight. Well, that was cool. That was a cool, like, maneuver that the Duke did. I love the uh, realistic screams on the battlefield. There he is with his knife again. See, doesn't that look like a Bowie knife? Stop, drop, and roll, man! Let's see, like, all these people starting on fire, like, are they throwing, like, oil on them or something? Like, people don't just light on fire when you, you touch them with fire. Ah, oh, dude's got a rock! Dude's just, that, <laughs> that's how I work out in the morning, I just carry a big rock. I don't have my, I'm not quite that, that easy, but... Man, can you imagine all the chafing and all the, like... Like, there are certain butt stocks I don't like to shoot with because they have, like, these attachments on the side. My beard gets caught in it. Can you imagine, like, you know... This chainmail pulling all your armpit hair and everything. I would imagine that a lot of these dudes back then uh, did, ne didn't die from war wounds. It's just nicks and cuts and lack of, uh, you know, oh, yeah. antibiotic ointment. No more to the Lords of Agatha. Oh. Oh, one dude just left the, he just left the game. Or oh, he just disappeared. It's just his character just went all floppy. All right, charge! Dude, can you imagine the adrenaline rush rushing into battle like this? Just a full frontal assault, baby. Generally, you you know, you guys would pepper each other with your arrows. You'd have trebuchets. You'd have ballistas. You'd use your archers to your advantage. You'd use your infantry in conjunction with your cavalry. You'd never send your cavalry in first, like on stupid Game of Thrones when they lost their source material and killed all their <laughs> uh, rocky, like, idiots. Visually great if you don't know anything about fighting. And yeah, so like you'd want to rock a helmet. I know there's like sexy scenes. And one of the reasons in, in movies, when you see even good movies where they lose their helmet, part of that is just so you can identify the character. And so I'll accept some of that, but like, you want a helmet. And these helmets were pretty effective. Yeah. 
Got a little bit of a halberd there. Okay, so you see on the, on the end of that, they've got kind of a spike and like an end cap and everything. So yep. you would often have, you know, the weighted end with all your fancy doodads and stuff on the back. And then you would use that to counter things and the, to poke in and everything, mm. right? A lot of people think that these pole arms were for like distance and you can create distance. But remember this, you're, you're using that as a can opener. In order to use it as a can opener, you got to get in there. So this is a close quarters weapon, even though it's longer. And that's why you wanted it sized to about your height. So that way you could maneuver it properly and use it to its greatest effect. Oof, oof. I mean, it's nice that they can kind of tell who's who. Sometimes you couldn't. Right? <laughs> They're you know? conveniently, I mean, back then, you know, you, you had to know who your fighting force was. Oof. Oh, right in the lower back. That's not fun. That's not fun. That was a... The Liberty Belt! Oh, that was, a, that was an awesome, awesome great sword on that dude's back over there. Yeah. So now this, this is realistic. Like you could do something like this just to create distance. You know what I mean? To back people up or kind of swing standard, around, uh, you know? Diagonal slash. And then holding it up here, that's a great spot just to keep it while you're moving around. You're saving some energy, you know? And you can drop down, use the fulcrum to pick up momentum with the swing. Oh, there's the helmetless dude. And got his helmet knocked off. Yeah, you don't want to not have a helmet. So those big spikes that you see that they're fighting over, they would set those up for like, you know, cavalry and horses and just as obstacles to get through. You can fight obviously with a uh, torch, but there's no reason to against somebody in armor. You're moving around so fast, like you're gonna have to hold them down and then wait. Okay, let's wait. Let's wait for this like wool, silk, chainmail mix to like light up. You know, and wool's like <laughs> kind of fire retardant. So I'm trying to get really, it into, that's the, just into the helmet, you know, blind him. If you're fending off some like robber barons, you know, or or you know some scallywags that aren't armored, yeah, man, like you know, swing that. You know, you don't want to get burned. That's gonna suck. You can get bashed, you know. But for dudes in armor, I wouldn't. I don't know. Dude, I can tell you right now, I would not want to be the first guy up that ladder. I'm so glad I live in an era Dude. where we have projectile weapons, where we can engage the enemy from many yards Dude. away. Like everybody asks me, like about knife fighting. I always tell, I'd rather get into a gunfight than a knife fight. Yeah, just, any old, any oh, idiot can man. carry around a knife and do some damage. Well, that is just is so unpredictable, and the damage, the wounds that you can give, like the amount of time it takes to bleed out, is just, mm -hmm. it's insane. Man, I had all these uh, extra axes and swords and stuff I was going to get out to show things, but I guess I didn't need to. Well, thank you kindly, lords and ladies, for joining us on this episode. Paul, thank you so much. Where can people find you on the internet? This was a lot of fun. Uh, you can find me at Mav11B on Instagram. I also have a new YouTube Rumble BitChute channel. Follow me at Thunderpump Radio.